can see I'm in a different space this week. It seems particularly appropriate for the goddess, the actual water spirit that we're going to be celebrating and honoring today. I'm actually uh, at the beach. I'm at um, a dear friend's house out on Long Island in, in the Hamptons. And we just walked down by the beach and I wasn't even thinking about how perfect it is for this water spirit, uh, Mami Wata. African water spirit that we're going to be honoring today. Um, just for context, um, most of you've been with me before, you know that in this space we very um, uh, consciously and passionately honor the divine feminine in ourselves, in the world, in everyone, whether you are male or female or whatever, however you identify gender-wise, because we all carry the qualities of, of the Divine Feminine within us. And they represent our, they, they show up as our connection to nature, as our loving and honoring of our bodies, which we know, particularly as women, but certainly men too, in different ways, how important it is to honor our bodies in this culture that we live in that's so objectifying, and also our emotions and our intuition. So today, we will do that by celebrating the feast day, the festival day of this African goddess, this African water spirit, whose feast day is this Friday on June 25th, Mama Wati. And she's, I, I, and I, I, I had never heard of her, so I had so much fun researching her, so I'm gonna be looking at my notes probably more than usual. She is, protective, seductive, potentially deadly. She reminded me a little bit of, of the Hindu Kali uh, in, in reading about her. And what she represents, she's, she very likely uh, came from a, a sort of an amalgamation of uh, different uh, mermaid goddesses from, from the European traditions and uh, Hindu goddesses and Christian Judeo but she's very uniquely African and was very likely, oh, she was definitely one of the ones that was revered by, especially in the, in the 14th through 16th centuries when enslaved people were forced to, uh, to the West and they brought their, their precious deities with them. And she showed up, she, and still to this day, shows up as Yamaya, who I've talked about before here, and in other manifestations. And she's, um, she really honors the essential sacred nature of water, which is perfect because we've just passed through the summer solstice, which is when the sun moves into Cancer, which is, you know, the quintessential water sign, um, and, and will be there until July 22nd, when the sun moves into, uh, into Leo. So we are definitely in the, the cancer time in the, the can very watery cancer summer time and she one of her first ways that she's honored is um, is for abundance that she can bring good fortune in, in the way of money but as uh, and I can share the site there was so much really fabulous information about her that I found in a couple places and some images too which I'll show you in a minute um, but in addition as they said um, as a capitalist par excellence, she, she also is revered as looking beyond just um, gain of money. It was really also a good fortune and abundance of um, health and procreation. She's another fertility goddess. Um, she supports uh, mothers and, and aids in, in decreasing impotence and infant mortality. She's someone that couples can call on for help in their negotiating their sexual desires. She also provides, she's very much of a, she's a, a goddess for everyone and particularly supports women in their professional and spiritual paths to become powerful priestesses and healers, both uh, psycho-spiritually but also physically. So she is a, a, a powerful healer herself. She is often portrayed, and there were several of her, she's often portrayed as, as with the, the tail of a mermaid or a fish and the, the torso of a woman. So she's sort of half, half fish, half human, 
and straddles earth and water and culture and nature. I loved that description of her. That's, that's um, one of the many statues of her, and here's just a, a different dramatic uh, representation of her. Very mermaid-like, um, but not, not the mermaid that we know of. And you can see she's got just such a powerful stance in all of these. She is, I'm not, and I'm just gonna read this because I thought it was so eloquent. She's a complex, multi-vocal, multifocal symbol with so many resonance that she feeds the imagination, generating rather than limiting meanings and significances. Nurturing mother, sexy mama, provider of riches, healer of physical and spiritual ills, embodiment of dangers and desires, risks and challenges, dreams and aspirations, fears and forebodings. People are attached to the seemingly limitless possibilities that she represents, and at the same time, they are frightened by her destructive potential, very Kali-like as well. So what they say, oh, and I love this phrase, what the Yoruban people, those are the, the diaspora of the enslaved people that came over from Africa and how they settled, they say about their, that their culture is applicable to the histories and significances of Mama Wata. She is like a river that never rests. So any form, really, a way to honor her, much like Yamaya, a way to honor her is to, uh, is to send blessings to her in any body of water. I'm at the ocean, so I will certainly do that tomorrow, or we'll be here on Friday on her actual feast day. So she is, primarily known, and she's known to really produce Africa's greatest um, seers, you know, wise people and wise women, wise men, prophetesses, uh, scribes, herbalists, healers, orators, mystics. She's known as the protector of mother, mothers and children of abused women and the bringer of fertility. So just a little bit of, just a little bit of background on her and, and definitely take a look at her on your own and see how you might honor her and bring her spirit, her very powerful, both life-giving and also uh, honor, not, not destructive, although, you know, destructing, uh, uh, destructive in terms of um, those people who would abuse women or who would harm children. Um, she's, she's someone that I, I, I really have to do more, more work with and, and get to know her better. So, I thought what I would do, and I probably even sung this, the, the, the chant that just came so through for me to sing, um, to celebrate her, is one of my favorites, I always say that, it is one of my favorites, and it is a, um, just, a, just a beautiful water honoring, water goddess honoring chant, and it goes like this. We all come from the goddess, and to her we shall return like a drop of rain flowing to the ocean. We all come from the goddess, and to her we shall return like a drop of rain flowing to the ocean. We all come from the goddess, and to her we shall return like a drop of rain, blowing to the ocean. Hmm. So I invite you to find a body of water today, Friday, on Mama Wati's official feast day and think about those areas in your life that may need healing or the things in your body both physically and also but, but also psycho spiritually because um, that that is a gift of hers where you would like to ask for abundance for good fortune all of the things that she governs and make an offering to her sing this if you find a Mama Wati chant, I would love to hear it. I'm always open to that. And thank you so much for exploring this new goddess for me. And, and I invite you to do some more of that exploring yourself. We'll see you next week. Not sure who my goddess is going to be yet, but she'll make herself known.
Have a wonderful day, a wonderful Mamawati celebration, and namaste.